I wanted to make another animation breakdown and today we're going to be looking at how I made the Olio logo animation. Now before we get into the fun part in After Effects, we have to do all the dirty work in Illustrator. And by that, I mean recreating the logo. Since I didn't have the AI file, I had to make it all based off this screenshot that I grabbed from his YouTube header. I used a couple different fonts to get the word mark down and then I just kind of spaced it according to the screenshot I had. And then for the crown, I just traced it with the pen tool and came up with this. So pretty close to his original logo and it'll definitely do the job that we wanted to. I took the crown and I changed it up a little bit. That's because the way that CC cylinder works, which is an effect I wanted to use in After Effects, I had to make sure that the lines were straight because as you can see in the logo, they all kind of slanted just ever so slightly. So if I put CC cylinder on it, you would have some weird gaps in the model. So I stretched out the sides and then just copy them on each side just so we had a nice model to work with. That's pretty much all I did in Illustrator. And from there, I just used the overall plugin to hop straight into art effects. The first part of this process was just adding the CC cylinder to my crown layer. So if I turn the CC cylinder off, you can have a look that that's just what that looks like. I have two layers here, but I started with just one layer, just made it a lot easier to animate and then later split them up into inside and outside. I didn't do any of these animations until after the next step. So before we get to this, let's hop into my other composition where I have the crown cop. Here I have the actual crown in the position that it's gonna end up being. And then I also have the pre-comp of our 3D crown. The reason I'm doing it this way is it's a lot easier to animate the position and scale first and then add the rotation afterwards. That way I can match the momentum and the spins and the wobbles of the crown to match the pacing of the way it flies. It's a pretty simple animation I've got going on in here. I have it flying up, going back in to be about the right scale. And we have a slight down and then up movement to just to give it a little bit more bounce and movement and then impact down and that's when it transitions into the actual crown that he used for his logo. I didn't do any morphing or adjusting a pass or anything. I just used a simple match cut. The impact of the animation of it going down, it fits really well and creates a very smooth and seamless transition. For the out of the crown, I pretty much did the same thing. I had the crown kind of fall down, kind of being dragged down by its own weight and collapsing. And again, it's just a very simple match cut. I just cut from one to the other, drop down, bounce back up, rest a little bit, kind of gain some momentum and speed and then fly out towards us. A big part of this animation here was working with the easing of keyframes. As you can see, it looks like a bit of a mess and it kind of turned into one, but overall it's pretty simple. I wanted to really sell the effect of the weight of the crown. The crown is so heavy that it kind of collapsed on the eye. With the position and scale all animated, I could go back into my crown layer where I have the CC cylinder applied to it and animate the wobbles and the rotation. It's a bit tedious because I had to go back and forth quite a bit. I tried to match the keyframes pretty evenly. So, you know, the keyframes are roughly in the same spots from there. It was all about matching the easing and how much I wanted to rotate a wobble and whatnot. We have our first rotation and it also tilts up a little bit, which is used for the upwards motion here, which then transitions into a downwards tilt as it goes kind of downwards and bounces back up. And this all helps to really sell the movement of the crown. And again, it's just super important to go in and play with the speed and easing of the keyframes. The goal is to try and create something that feels realistic, even though it isn't. So when I animated this, I used my arm a lot to kind of envision what the crown's movements would be like, kind of going up, down and then wobble back in. So just kind of imagining what that animation looks like. And then for the down drop, for example, you can see it tilts downwards a little bit. So if you were to drop something heavy, it would often tilt as well when you drop it. Now that's pretty much all there is for the crown animation, except for one little null object that I use to really drive the impact and also drive the animation of the eye coming out. Right as the crown animates into the eye, I have it a slight push of the Y position just to accentuate it a little bit and drive the eye as well. And then it also gives me a little bit of extra bounce as the eye comes back up, it kind of pushes the crown back into its position. As far as the word mark goes, I wanted to keep it very simple. Hence why I just used the eye as the main driving component of the rest of the animation. And I thought it would be very nice to create kind of like a wave ripple animation. So I started with the eye coming in and as soon as that impacts down, we have the other letters bouncing up and kind of rippling through. 
So just kind of offsetting it a little bit. That was very easy to do. I just grouped the two letters, so the L and the U and the O and the R to uh, a null object. So LU in one null object and OR in another null object. And then I just added a slight position animation to it. And then I added an expression. I added the inertial bounce expression and the expression gave it a nice bounce to it and kind of eased out of it. Creating this kind of follow through and wobble at the end would be very hard to do manually and be a way too much work. So if you can use expressions, highly recommend. For the owl, I started by squishing the levers together towards the eye. So I just animated the path and moved them towards the eye and made sure they were all within the frame of the eye. Then I animated the position of each one kind of go outwards a little bit. So we get some anticipation to our animation. You can see it goes out just a tiny bit and then it picks up speed and mashes into the eye. Just drives the animation a little bit. And to cap it off, we have the crown collapsing on the eye right after the letters come in. You can see there's a, that's where our wave cuts, but you don't notice that because of the speed. Collapses down, bounces back up and then animates up. Most of the work is done within the easing of the keyframes and keeping the momentum flowing. So if we play this back as it is, we've got a pretty nice little animation. Now there's a couple more finishing touches that I added to this, one of that being echo. I did it to create a bit more movement and I really like using echo, especially in these type of animations to emphasize the movement and how fast something moves, which is a trick that's often used in original 2D hand-drawn um, animation. I changed the fill color to match the inside color of the crown. I just felt like that looked a little nicer. Lastly, posterized time set that to 12 just to get a bit more of that hand-drawn kind of stuttery animation and it just works super well especially in combination with echo i wanted to showcase this piece in a really nice way and kind of up the quality of it a little bit and one way i did that was by recreating a background that i saw on olio's website so i figured that would be a perfect background for his logo animation just because it would be a pistol at something that he's made. I used a black background first. The next thing I added was a circle, which is pretty much the same color as the background. I think it's slightly off. I just kind of eye matched it. I duplicated the circle and then I added a couple of effects to it. If I just take these off, you can see the first thing is light sweep and I set that to cut out. That way we only get this kind of glow. We get this kind of like outline adjusted a little bit to get a nice, even and smooth fall off. Then I added deep glow, one of the best glow plugins you can get just for that little bit extra bit of light and it just looks a lot nicer when you have glowing a couple things. I added an expression to the exposure just to create a slight flicker. Uh, it was just a simple wiggle expression just to wiggle between a couple numbers. And lastly, I added posterized time to it just to make it a little bit more stuttery. Those three layers, we have the background. Next up, I have a black solid and I just added a mask to it using the ellipse tool. And that's just to create a very simple vignette, just adjusting the feathering, very old school trick. We have our crown animation and I added a transform effect to it just to create a little bit of a camera shake almost. And nice little touch as well, just for a little bit more movement. And it fits really well with the style. Then we have an adjustment layer. I layered two noise instances. I found that this gives a more natural looking grain. The first instance is a bigger grain at a faster pace. And then I duplicated that and I just changed that to a smaller grain size and lowered the speed of it. Last, I have two pre-made particle animations, one with black particles, one with white particles, and that just kind of moves, you know, just kind of animates ever so slowly. I felt that something was missing. It was missing a bit of, you know, a little bit of up. So I went back into my composition with my logo. And then to the crown, I added a glow effect and added another flicker just to add a little bit more light and to match the background a little bit. So with that, you can see it just kind of adds just a tiniest bit of detail and emphasis to the crown, which is the main piece of the animation as well. I was able to create something that looks and feels a lot more complex than what it is. Nothing too intense or a lot of effects staggered on top. It's pretty bare bones. And then there is one final trick that I covered in one of my previous videos, which is sound design, which really, really helped sell the entire animation. And I'd highly recommend go and check that out because that is probably 50% on why this animation turned out so good. Because yes, it is a good animation just as an animation. But once I had the sound design, it took it to a whole other level. Anyways, that's all for this logo animation breakdown. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. I just want to say thank you and uh, I'll see you again next week. So, bye.